move because I can move it very easily. Like a description of any mass in any part of the body, the site, the size, the consistency, the surface, uh, the being pulsatile or not, tender or not, any discharge coming from this uh, mass, uh, attachment to skin, attachment to underlying structure. What I mean that the description of a kidney mass is the same as the description of any other mass in the body. Doesn't differ. Uh, now, what else? Someone say, okay, you don't palpate the liver. Yes, I palpate the liver, of course, in any patient's coming can fail. And why is that? <coughs> because I just said one of the heredofamilial disease is a polycystic disease of the kidney. Polycystic disease may affect the liver. I get cysts in the kidney and cysts also, they may be present in the liver. So in any approach, any patient with renal disease, I have to try to palpate the liver. Khud nafas I start from the right iliac fossa, nafas, I go up and uh, uh, I can feel the kidney here. In this patient, of course, you have to believe me. Nafas amik, nafas amik, now I felt the liver. I feel the liver. Once you feel the liver, you have also to try to feel the left lobe. Nervous, nervous, uh, here. Oh, now I can feel it about three centimeters below the costal, below the, the foid process. And I will describe this level. I will not leave it like that. I will say the liver is palpable uh, about three centimeters below the right costal margin. It has a smooth surface, spermal consistency. It is not tender. It is not pulsatile. The edge is sharp. And I will get the so-called liver spam. I feel cast from the right iliac fossa in the mid clavicular line. Starting from right iliac fossa in the mid clavicular line. This is the mid clavicular line. It is resonant, resonant here, resonant here, resonant here, dull here. So it means that this is the lower border of the liver. Uh, let the patient fix uh, finger or make a small mark and percuss to get the upper border or the upper uh, level of the liver starting from the second intercostal space, as you know, we feel the sternal angle and then get the second costal space again in the mid clavicular line. And the cast, resonant here, resonant here, resonant here, still resonant, dull here. Then we measure the level and it seems that it is of normal size because it, it will be around maybe 10 centimeters. You should get, of course, tape measure and measure it accurately. So why it is palpable? It could be palpable because of uh, other reasons like uh, fatty infiltration of the liver, or it is pushed down by something, or effect of drugs he was taking before, etc., etc., but it is not enlarged anyhow. What else I should do? Of course, you percuss for spleen, as you know, but this is not our main item today, and percuss for ascites. Now, if you want to percuss for ascites in a patient like that, and he has a kidney mass here, where you go? This side or that side? It's a very simple question. And uh, I, I know this may be insult to your intelligence because it's clear here that there's a mass, so I should not go to the left side. But believe me, many of the people who they ask you to do, uh, to do percussion of ascites, they totally forget that there is a mass. Uh, so I will move to the right. This is the best. Uh, uh, point because it is the most resonant again. Yeah, this is the one. Then notice that I changed the direction of my finger. I was going down, and then when I get the maximum resonant, I change the direction. Then I move to the right flank. It is resonant here, resonant here, resonant also. Still resonant, still resonant. No need to do uh, shifting downwards because there's no sides. If it is resonant in the middle and resonant on the side, it means there's no fluid. If there is fluid, then you perform the, tide, uh, the uh, shifting dullness, uh, and I'm sure everyone knows how to percuss for shifting dullness. So that's inspection. And that's a superficial and deep palpation. And palpation of the kidneys, original one and transplanted. Palpation of the liver, spleen. Percussion of the liver, spleen. 
and also you have, you ought to, you must percuss over the transplanted kidney. And what do you expect here? Expect to get dullness because this uh, kidney is very superficial, by the way. Just very important point. When they do kidney transplantation, they do not remove the original kidney. They leave it in place. Because it still it can produce some amount of hysporitin. And because it is very difficult to do operations both sides. And then another one here. It is a bloody operation. And no need, unless the kidney, original kidney, is a source of trouble. Like, for example, severe hypertension, which is uncontrolled, like uh, the kidney is a source of infection, as patients with chronic pyelon flights, then we can remove it. But generally speaking, we keep the original kidney. Now, back to percussion of this kidney. You percuss directly on it. This kidney is different from the original. The original, as I said, the retroperitoneal. They are not inside the peritoneal cavity. The transplanted kidney is intraperitoneal. It is inside the peritoneal cavity. The transplanted kidney, therefore, is superficial one compared to the deep, uh, old, uh, or original native kidneys. And so when I percuss, I expect dullness because the kidney is just under my fingers. And let us hear. So this is dull. Why it is dull? Because that is resonance. This one is dull. And why is dull? Why it is dull? Again, I'm repeating. Because this kidney is superficial. Because if you just open the skin subcutaneous and the muscle layer, you'll find the kidney. It is intraperitoneal. It is not extraperitoneal. It is not retroperitoneal. You remember when they ask you in the exam how to differentiate between kidney mass and spleen? The usual routine, uh, I don't want to say dumb question, but uh, it's well known by everybody. And the, the answer, uh, the student immediately will say, yeah, yeah, the kidney uh, on percussion is resonant, why the spleen on percussion is dull? And then we ask him, okay, why you think the kidney on percussion is resonant? Then the student keeps silent. I don't know why. It is resonant to the original kidney. If you percuss on it, it is resonant because it is not inside the peritoneum. It is away from your hand. It is here, down. It is retroperitoneal. And that's why if I percuss on the original kidney, even if it is so large, it will be resonant. Why the transplant kidney is dull? Because, I'm repeating. It is dull because it is superficial. It is dull because it is immediately under the muscle. It is dull because it is intraperitoneal. So what is the difference in the percussion note between percussion of the original or native kidney, percussion of trans kidney, one sentence, original kidney on percussion is resonant, transplanted kidney on percussion is dull. And I explained why. Finishing with that, we finish with palpation. Then we go to auscultation. Auscultation of the abdomen in the case of renal failure or renal disease in general uh, is not extremely uh, valuable because we have very few signs which can be detected by auscultation in patients with renal disease. Namely, you have to auscultate for blue of the renal arteries in patients with renal arteries to nose. So the stethoscope, you just put your uh, stethoscope, the diaphragm, of course, uh, just lateral and a little above the level of the uh, of the umbilical. That is the level of L1 because that is the level where the renal artery originate uh, from the aorta. So again, if you are asked to sculpt the abdomen in a patient with renal disease, the first thing to do is to put your stethoscope lateral and a little bit above, about one inch, one inch, and apply a little pressure so that if there is brewery, you'll be able to appreciate it. If there is brewery by the diaphragm, by stethoscope, in the abdomen, in that position, then 
it is most probably renal artery stenosis. And if it is bilateral, so it is bilateral renal artery stenosis. And bilateral renal artery stenosis, as everyone knows, is a cause of severe hypertension, sometimes life-threatening, and may need a correction by surgery. It may cause renal failure, by the way. What is the second value of the cystoscope in a renal patient like that? We have to put a cystoscope on the transplanted kidney itself. You may get brewy on the transplanted kidney, and if you, uh, you hear that, there may be some problems of the transplanted kidney may be uh, uh, rejected or about to be rejected or there may be stenosis of the artery connected to the kidney. And notice that uh, I said here the artery connected to the transplant kidney. I didn't say the renal artery because it is not the renal artery which supplied the transplant kidney. They take usually uh, 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 extension from the iliac artery and from the kidney to the iliac vein. It is not the renal artery anymore. We don't call it renal artery. If you call it, uh, of course, this is not literally the meaning. Sometimes those people may have alias. Alias means that if you put a cystoscope in the abdomen and keep it for some time, uh, like three minutes or so, you may not be able to feel the proper intestinal sounds. And that's because of uremia. Uremia, in general, is a cause of the so-called paralytic alias. So far, for the abdomen, and uh, we will go to the lower limbs quickly before we demonstrate the so-called AV fistula. Lower limbs of people like that uh, should be examined for certain signs. A very important, when you, 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 you leave some part of the body, make sure that you cover the patient in a nice way because uh, remember always that he is a human being with feelings so he should feel that you are taking care of him uh, not neglecting uh, after opening uh, his exposing here and then and then you leave him and go no you can return back uh, everything unnecessary now to its place and since you are the one who opened these buttons please uh, uh, put them on again. Okay. So, sorry for that, but uh, I have to do it. Okay. For the lower limbs, of course, there are certain points in physical examination uh, which are of importance. So, the lower limbs, there are a few points uh, uh, which you should uh, uh, warrant attention in patients with renal disease. Of course, the most important, uh, as you know, is the lower limb edema. Uh, how to test for lower limb edema? Everyone knows that we should start from around the ankle. Around the ankle means, doesn't mean that you press on the medial malleolus, you know, a little bit below it. You keep your pressure for 15 to 20 seconds with the thumb, not with any other thing. Thumb, 15, 20 seconds, just below the mirror, and then remove it. Now you see, uh, this patient is having clear low limb edema. Let's check the other side. Again, apply pressure here, below the medial malleolus. This is so-called around the ankle. 15, 20 seconds with the thumb. Then after that you move. You can see very clearly that there is deep edema, both sides bilateral. What is the significance of that? It indicates volume of a lot, fluid, accumulation in those people. It can be seen because of hypoalbuminemia and renal disease as a patient with nephrotic syndrome. You may go up and test for edema higher uh, than the first point, but you have to apply the same technique. 15, 20 seconds, there's some and uh, on the bony prominence I'm pressing on the tibia and then the edema again is very clear and compared bilaterally 
then uh, you grade the edema. You don't grade edema according to the level. We grade edema according to the depth. So from mm, my position here, I can say that this is four plus, four plus large because it's very deep. It's more than four millimeters in depth. That is the way to grade edema. What else in the lower limbs? Very important here to notice that there is difference in the length of both legs. This leg is shorter than that. It's clear from here that this leg, the left one, is longer than the right. The right is shorter than the left. And what could be the explanation? Let me ask him. محاذ انت لما بتمشي بتمشي طبيعي ولا بتحس ان في بتحس بايه بتحس بعرجه شوي so he he is uh, not uh, when he 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 walks uh, we are going to show you his uh, gait at the end he is uh, uh, is not normal it is not normal gait so shortening abnormal gait in a renal failure patient should always draw attention to the so called avascular necrosis of the hip. And why they get a vascular necrosis of the hip? It is one of the causes, vascular necrosis of the hip. One of these causes is a chronic renal failure because of the renal osteodystrophy uh, as a complication of secondary or tertiary hyperparathyroidism. Of course, the rest of floor limb examination, everyone is aware of. Check the pulses, especially if the patient is... Uh,